the storm, of course, is still counting, but it's, right now it's costing $125 billion of loss. Um, but more important than the cost is the human lives. Um, the victims is, is over 1,800 victims and still counting. Um, the most impacted group of people were the elderly, uh, were over 75 years of age. They had nowhere to go. They got stranded. Communication was a problem when a hurricane. Cell towers were knocked down. You couldn't even use a cell phone. If you got a cell phone, you got, it was busy. There was, there was no forms of communications. The only way we could, we could get to our people was to use the next tail, was to direct connect. Um, it was um, unbearable. Um, you had no electricity when the guys came back, trying to get back to work. You had um, people living in FEMA trailers. That's the government provided FEMA trailers down there for people to live in, for the workers to do. Rescue efforts came, they lived in FEMA trailers. Our own employees had to do that for a while. We, we, as you'll see later, we were involved in the contracts to start debris removing. Our guys had to live in those trailers to get to work. But you had to go through OSHA training, get certified. You had to get your tetanus shot. You had to do all kinds of things. Uh, but everybody pitched in. You know, we had people who had power or gave, gave up their apartments for other other people to live in a in decent, to take a bath, you know, to get food. Um, it's, a, it's a way to get back to work. And then you look at the city and everything around you is, is gray and black, moldy. Uh, nothing was green. You, you had a place that had no birds, no squirrels, for example. You didn't see any pets around. It was just like a, a war zone almost. It's just, uh, and everything was, everybody was just afraid of what's next. But our employees did make a difference. They lived part of the Marquette model of being a difference. And I'm proud of the job that those people did. Uh, many, many of them lost everything. Um, when someone asked why we live in the area like we live, the answer is our home. We're used to that. Uh, we, we have no place to go. Um, so, but we did see humanity as its best, and we, we received proof that no matter what situation, no matter what situation arises, the human rise above. And after experience Katrina, I cannot imagine anything that we cannot come back from. So we helped the Corps provide. QA monitors where we had to keep track of the debris trucks, uh, keeping track of quantities, and because the contracts are getting paid by the volume of the trucks and the weight of the truck. We had our guys working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. That job made a big difference for us because we had the time with about 30 employees, and the government says, we need you to hire 100 people right away. We had teamed up with a national firm. We were the prime, and we had to, we hired personally 75 employees, new employees, just for that contract. Off the street, we had educated people, lost their jobs, um, all kinds of people just to, to get money, to get to feed their families. Um, it, it was quite an experience, and this, again, shows the debris, some of the debris that were removed. Public schools, it was a big priority. Uh, the schools got damaged pretty, pretty severely. We are involved with a joint venture to help speed that process along by managing the design and the construction of the rebuilding of this school system. There's 36 new schools being rebuilt. The airport, again, we were already involved at the international airport. We were program managers. Before Katrina hit, and then when we, Katrina hit, the airport was converted into a triage area. The military took over the airport. That's where they provided a rescue effort. We just completed a runway 
The day the hurricane hit was the final inspection on the main runway project. If we had not completed that project by then, President Bush or the big plans wouldn't have landed at the airport because they had kind of expanded the airport. So we had kind of completed the same day the hurricane hit. The hurricane protection levee system, we, we talk about the, the levees along the river, but south Louisiana, where we get the backwater surge, see all the water flows to the, the Gulf, it gets in the canal, flows to the Gulf. When the storm comes, it wants to push that water back up towards the city, it's called the back, backwater surge. So we're also helping the Corps with information of trying to redesign levee systems down uh, to try to prevent as much as possible uh, the storm surges. And where we are today, just to recap the finish of where we are four years later from the hurricanes, uh, you can see that New Orleans population has only come back 68%. Um, and in the metropolitan area, only came back 86% of pre-Katrina populations. The colleges are very important to the, to the economy of the city. You see the colleges enrollment uh, went from, it's only 70% uh, before pre-Katrina populations. And more importantly, the sales tax, the monies, Sales tax monthly were at $12.6 million. Right before Katrina hit, it dropped off to $1.1 million per month. It only came back so far to $11.6 million.